The Triumph Speed Twin 900, the entry level modern classic Triumph motorcycle. But entry level, it's not the phrase that inspires more than all else. It's not the kind of bike that you would think that you'd put up on your bedroom wall. I mean, entry level. It's the first, it's a stepping stone on your way to the dream bike. Look, if you want the ultimate in the Triumph lineup, you will go for a T120. If you want a ridiculously impractical but ludicrous levels of cool, you'll go for the Triumph Bobber. If you want a slightly smaller, lighter version of the T120, well, that's the T100. And if you want something ultra compact, that will be the Trident. And if you want something ultra aggressive, but with that retro styling, finally, you will go for the Speed Twin 1200. Is it possible to have an entry level bike that is a dream bike and potentially a forever bike? And is it possible that this, the Speed Twin 900, is actually the sweet spot within the entire Triumph lineup? Right, let's do a walk around and see what we're dealing with. If we start with the silhouette of the bike, very Bonneville T100-esque, but you can see the back bit has a slightly more sporty profile with the seat just raising up slightly and the overall proportions just of the back section do look more like a bike from 2022 as opposed to something from the 1960s or so. But everything else, silhouette-wise, general shape of the bike, think Bonneville T100, but slightly pared back, slightly tamed down without all of the, the flash and glamour. Single-sided disc with all of the classic touches, but without any of the flash or bling. So you've got the rubber gaiters here. Again, indicators, nothing flash, but very simple. Nice quality plastic to them. Not a chrome front headlamp. Black plastic, black plastic headlamp. Adjustable levers. These have the bar end mirrors on the top. Nice quality tank work, but with the Triumph logo, just either painted or I think that's just stuck on, as opposed to having that real iconic Triumph badge. Beautiful styled exhausts, twin sided, so one on either side. You actually have to really, with this bike, feel every element of it. You know, listen to this. The confidence of that click. Let me just, let me take this off because every single area of this bike is just beautiful, beautiful quality materials. Have a listen to this confident click. It's the most confident pillion foot click that I think I've ever heard. It's everything about it is beautiful. Every area that you touch whether it's plastic or metal, just the most beautiful quality. The seat itself, slightly more raised for the pillion. Good opportunity, actually. I'll just show you the pillion comfort. Monica, what did you think? Very comfortable. Yeah? Yes. All day comfort for yes. a pillion? 10 yeah? out of 10. Really? Yeah. Okay. I'm on a slight hill here. Ooh. Actually, it's got a nice amount of support as well. Mm -hmm. Very nice. Good for a pillion. I can tell you for the, the rider itself, it's lovely and comfortable. I'm six foot one and 80 kilos. Really nice bend in the legs. So this will definitely suit the shorter rider. You know, if you're, I think if you're even five foot two, five foot three, this is a bike you should be considering. Really nice situation of the weight as well. So it feels incredibly tame. Let's come around and show you what we get here. The rider's point of view. Lovely, elegant, simple speedo. Turn it on. And it's just about as simple as you could wish for. You've got a mode button here, and that will flip purely between rain and road. You can see there just flicking away. Nothing else. You've got a petrol gauge there with just an eye button here, and that will just toggle between your MPG, distance left and a few other bits and pieces. Before I completely forget, this, the specs of this bike, 8,600 pounds, 900 cc, 64 horsepower, and 216 kilos wet weight. Nothing remarkable there at all. It sounds like a good, solid, sensible bike, at least on paper. And looking at it, 
There's nothing remotely flashy here, but every single element of it has been built to a very, very high standard. You may notice this doesn't look much like England. That's because we're still in Tenerife. And if you want to rent this Speed Twin 900, Triumph T120s or a Triumph Bobber, you can head over to Tenerife on Triumph. They also have biker friendly accommodation. So you can see the website here or I'll put the link in the written description for you to click on. They sell dreams. It's riding heaven here. Right, let me do two things quickly. Number one, exhaust note. First of all, the visuals, I know I touched upon it, but they are beautiful exhausts. Really works of art. I, looks wise, at least, I wouldn't change it. And sound wise. Ah, oh, the insects here. And sound wise, Monica, you can cut that out if you want. Sorry, Monica's just fallen off the side of a cliff. <laughs> Sorry. Really, really beautiful. It's quite different to other modern classics because it's got a much, much more deep down grunt. Really very, very nice. Even at one and a half thousand revs or so, you get that very nice deep grunty burble that you don't get with a lot of other modern classics. Lean angle, just to give you an idea. Uh, I think this is going to be good because it's the weight is situated so low down on this. Yeah, I mean, I don't even have to squat my legs because it's so, there, that's about it. But it's so easy to lift up and down because it's got, in my eyes, I'll just move it back so I don't drop it. It's got in my eyes, one of, the lowest weight distributions that I've experienced, maybe 216 kilos, but that weight in the engine is so low down on the bike. It's, you know, it's, it's no more intimidating. In fact, it's probably less intimidating than the likes of the Interceptor, even the BSA Gold Star. So don't let the engine kind of scare you off. You know, I think it's a 900. Oh dear, I better get a smaller engine. No, this is just as tame as you'd ever want it to be. I mean, I had to ride this bike for, you know, I always do that when I do the lean angle, then I need about 10 seconds to get my breath back. I had to ride this bike for about a minute before it's completely obvious. It's a machine of the highest quality. You really do not need to be around this long to appreciate everything that's gone into making this bike brilliant. Let's take a look at the suspension. I mean, it just is silky smooth everywhere. You feel like you're gliding. The brakes, a step up from so many of the other modern classics. And what that means in reality is you can brake harder 
brake and stop sooner, but you still feel completely in control. So you can stop so much faster, but you don't feel like you're doing an emergency stop. Everything just feels beautifully balanced and in control. And the handling, it's telepathic. You almost, with this bike, the weight is so perfectly balanced and it's so beautifully proportioned and you feel so at one with the bike, I promise you, you almost don't need to use your hands when you're riding and turning on these bends. I could probably ask Monica to tie my hands behind my back and just, just gently <laughs> lean from left to right. It is that beautifully balanced, this bike. You genuinely, you feel like you're gliding. I mean, everything about it is just absolutely glorious. I was out on a ride for five or six hours with, what did we have? We had a Triumph Street Twin, or Triumph Street tw Triple, sorry. We had a Triumph Bobber and a Triumph T120. We all went out two days ago in Tenerife. And we were going along, I mean, just as nice a roads as you could ever dream of. And there is one area with this bike where you do slightly notice the limitations when compared to that 1200cc Triumph engine. We were going around from left to right, these beautiful winding roads. And if I wasn't in the correct gear, I noticed the bobber and the street triple, both, I think, let's say 80 to 115 horsepower around that area. So a good chunk more than this. Both could leave me coming out of the bends if I wasn't in the exact right gear. So for example, if I was coming into a bend, maybe third or fourth, and it was the wrong gear, slightly too high, I'd get slightly bogged down, try to power out, but they would leave me. So I have to make sure I'm in the exact right gear to be able to carry enough power out of the bend. And that was a really interesting difference between this and the 1200cc engine with, I think, about 80 horsepower, and also the street triple with around about 115 horsepower. So that, for me, is the main difference between the 900cc engine and the 1200. The 1200 just has slightly more low down grunt to be able to get you out of the bends if, like me, you sometimes go into the corners in slightly too high a gear. I mean, I was out for six hours on this bike and I got off, jumped off fresh as a daisy. I could have gone on and on and on. It's all day comfort. It's a bike that pretty much does everything very well. It is a supremely accomplished motorcycle. Let's look at the Interceptor and the BSA. They feel much rawer, they feel more classic. They probably have, if I'm being very critical here, they have more character. If I can give an example, let's say you're going to B&Q or a hardware store and you're looking to do up your kitchen and you set your budget very specifically. The taps that you get, the, the tiles you get, the paint, the bath, the shower head, everything has to fit within that price range. If you're Royal Enfield and BSA, and this is of no insult at all because they fit perfectly within where they're trying to market, you're taking parts from this level of the shelf here. If you're Triumph, everything is up here, whether it's the tiles or the taps, everything. And while individually that may not make a huge amount of difference, for example, the plastics used for the surround, the levers and the lightness of those levers, the paint quality, Individually, it may not make a difference, but bring all of that together and what you have is a much, much more impressive product with all of those bits brought in. And that's the best way that I can describe it. There's no one individual bit that makes this better, but every single element 
is from the top shelf on this bike. If we look at some other examples, the Triumph T120, for example, well, you could say that that's a no-brainer. You go out and you buy the T120 if you have the money. But this gives you something very different. This gives you a lightness of handling and finesse and balance that the T120 could never dream of. You much, you're much more inclined, or much more inclined, to attack the bends and really feel like you're at one with this bike over the T120. The T120 feels quite cumbersome sometimes and it feels like you have to really manhandling it. There's no manhandling involved with this. Then you've got the likes of the Kawasaki Z650 RS and even the Yamaha XSR700. And while they are around about the same price bracket as this, if not a little bit cheaper, and they are probably slightly more powerful if my memory serves me correctly. This feels like a more substantial bike physically and it's got the retro classic looks over those two. Wondering what the bike of choice is here in Tenerife? Japanese weapons. Go out on a Saturday and Sunday and you will see literally hundreds of these heading out into the mountains. This one's fairly typical. Modified Kawasaki ZX6R from, what would that be, late 1990s or something. I'm sure that's a weapon. Okay. The Triumph Speed Twin 900. Look, I could say to you that it is an excellent beginner's bike, and it is, but that would be doing it such a disservice because so, so much more than that. This bike is the thinking man or woman's modern classic. You get everything that you need with this, minus the bits that you don't. You're not paying for any chrome or any style for styling sake here. You're paying for understated class and absolute quality throughout the bike, but with nothing more than you absolutely need. I would honestly say that this is, if we look at everything, price, quality, performance, and importantly, style. I don't think there's another bike within the modern classic segment of the market that offers such a complete package as this bike. It's completely, completely superb. Okay, let's wrap it up there because I need to head into the hills. And there is nothing I would like to ride more than the Speed Twin 900, I really do mean it. If you're interested in taking this bike out, do get in touch, Tenerife on Triumph, because it is the stuff of dreams riding out here. And a bike like that is just about perfect. So thanks so much everyone for coming on. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and also hit the bell icon, and it will remind you every time you have a new video out. See you in the next one.